Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Erin. I go by Erin the Urban Mermaid, and I am a fifth dimensional soul guide, helping souls transcend consciousness and rise as self healers and modern mystics who are the leaders of the new earth. Um, I do this through my monthly program, my Grounded and Glam monthly membership, as well as the movement that I started a couple months ago, which has sincerely caught on fire and just really developed into something so beautiful. My movement is called Empress Ascension. Um, and I help everyone using sacred esoterica, which is the knowledge and wisdom I have been gifted and attuned to. Um, so if you're here, you are here for the sun goddess, Scorpio sun goddess reading. We are in Scor Scorpio season. It is November. We are at the close of the calendar year. It's wild. Um, so it's a couple of days after the Scorpio um, new moon, but we do have the sun, Mars and Mercury all in Scorpio. So that makes it a stellium. We have eclipses this month. So um, again, in Gemini and Sagittarius, just like they were in May and June. So we're looking for a closing, a huge closing of a cycle. Um, so Scorpio is kind of notoriously the most complex sign of the Zodiac. Um, they are a fixed water sign. They're often confused with fire signs because they are very feisty. They are intense. They are dramatic. They take shit personally. They take shit to the heart. Um, and I don't mean this all in a bad way at all. I don't want to polarize it. This is just who they are. They're very mysterious on the shadow side. That can be shady. Um, they are intense, but they really are the FBI agents of the Zodiac. They are going to get to the heart of the matter of anything. Um, I'm a Scorpio stellium myself, even though my son is in Sag and I'm a Sag stellium. So I have um, Scorpio in Mercury, which makes me the human lie detector and the FBI agent. Um, and I have a Scorpio and Pluto and I have my South node in Scorpio and my moon is in the eighth house. So Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. So I have that home placement, but, um, Scorpio, um, and Pluto together rule the eighth house, which is house of mysteries, house of transformations at the, at the end of the day, the heart of Scorpio is how are you going to let stuff die? for new stuff to be reborn and birthed. So it is a transformational sign. It is a challenge for you. You are meant to be challenged here, but it's to push you to the other side, to your better self, to emerge, whether it's the phoenix rising, whether it's the butterfly moment, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's really what Scorpio is here to do to us, for us, not to us for us. <laughs> um, Scorpio is also a very sexual sign. They are not a very trusting sign. So if you win the trust of a Scorpio, you have it for life because they are loyal to the very end. Um, so I guess that's pretty much all I want to say about Scorpio. I'd like to get into the reading now. So I'm going to be channeling using um, the golden art Nouveau Tarot, and I'm going to clarify using just the Golden Universal Tarot. And I just got a really, uh, got a bunch of really cool new Oracle decks. So we're going to have a fun Oracle to close this out at the end. So I've already meditated on the energy of Scorpio. Um, let's just angels, archangels, guardian angels, spirit guides, divine source light. I invite you all in to guide us through this Scorpio sun goddess reading. All right, let's see what's going on. Four of wands. Okay, so we're crowning the reading with four of wands, four of swords, all right, the hermit, ton of cups, always love to see that. Okay, so four of wands is a celebration of swords. What are we celebrating this Scorpio season? That's awesome. So I pulled the four of um, swords um, and I'm getting that this is the recent past. So maybe I'm getting like it just happened. Perhaps it was in October. Perhaps it was in Libra season, but we need to rest easy. We need to chill out. We need to take a personal time out, rest easy, relax. My son, he says, relax. And it is the least relaxing relax ever, but it's hilarious. So 
what do we need to chill out about? <laughs> um, I'm actually going to stick with this deck right now. So let's see. What do, we, what do we need to relax about so that we can party later? Ace of Cups. The Empress. Four of Cups. Okay, so Ace of Cups is a beautiful card. It is um, beautiful, creative energy. It is a beautiful new beginning. And we have the Empress here. Um, and, you know, the Empress is Empress Ascension. That's who the energy I was gifted to birth my movement. So I'm getting that in the, in the not so, in the very recent past, um, we really needed to trust ourselves, like take a chill out on ourselves, like time out. I've got this. Now I pulled three fours already. Four is a card of four is hard work. You know, four is like, you've put in a lot of work on something. So, and the four of cups, I see it as being in some deep meditation and contemplation, like really thinking things through. So I feel that we were birthing something new and it was just something we really wanted to happen really bad. I'm getting creative venture here. Um, and it was something that we put a lot of time and effort in, but we, we didn't do it the same way we used to do where we previously would have been like, um, uh, Knight of Swords energy, which is like charge ahead, reckless, uh, not thinking things out. Whereas here, it seems like this was a very calculated move. We've really put the time in to think about it. And now we need to rest easy. So I'm getting a lot of let's trust the divine here. I'm going to get I'm going to switch decks. I'm going to get a couple clarifications on here. I, I love where this is going. So we're ce we're celebrating something new that we created. That's awesome. You know, sometimes we forget to celebrate our accomplishments. Um, I think that's a lesson to all of us. Uh, I know personally, I have a block with um, sharing praise or getting a compliment. Oh my God, especially men. Jesus Christ. If a man gives me a compliment, I'm like, and I blame that on Leo in the eighth house, but whatever. Okay. So six of cups, a lot of cup energy. A lot of cup energy. Um, the Hierophant and judgment. Okay. What I'm getting here is we really, I'm getting that we really stuck to or adhered to a divine plan. Divine timing is coming in big for me right here. Um, the six of cups is a really beautiful card. Um, I attribute it to having like this really lovely childlike energy to it. So perhaps in order for us to bring whatever this was to fruition, this creative venture, this, um, this thing that we put our heart and soul into, um, not only did we have to relax and do it differently than we normally would have, um, we had to invoke something childlike, a childlike innocence. Maybe it's the trust that children have. Um, and, and somehow this is meant to be teaching us something along our journey because the Hierophant is a spiritual teacher and then judgment. So I think that this has caused us to really reassess our life. Like we kind of maybe had a really big aha moment. Um, and I would say that this started with the eclipses back in May and June. Like we had these aha moments, but now we're finally putting it together and utilizing it like oh hey i'm not gonna be the fucking knight of swords and charge recklessly into shit i'm gonna take my time and plan stuff out and i'm gonna allow i'm going to allow i feel like that's what the hierophant and um and judgment is teaching us that we we need to allow for divine timing to occur okay so um all right now, so the next card I, I pulled is the Hermit. Hermit came to me in August really big, but I've been saying lately that with the Eclipse energy and with all the Scorpio energy, and last week we had a lot of very heavy spiritual days. We had Samhain, we had um, 
All Saints Day, we had All Souls Day. Um, you know, it, it was, it's very spiritually charged. The veil is very thin during those times. So while I do feel we ended something, I don't think there was a hard ending and I don't feel there was, there's like, oh, hey, let me open the door into this new chapter. There is a thing called spiritual limbo. And this is that tween time between cycles. And I feel that what we're being shown now is, is we need to withdraw and we need to take this time. We need to do our introspection. Um, did we learn the lessons? What were these last six months building us up to? What, like, did we learn the lessons? Did we have tower moments? Did we learn from our tower moments? Um, it's, and I just want to say this too, as someone who had a major tower moment after I thought I was all healed and I got my shit together, you have those tower moments, not as a bad thing. You have those moments to show you what you still need to address with yourself so you can ascend. And yeah, they're hard and they're messy and they're chaotic, but you need them. It's part of your growth. Um, growth is not linear. Okay. Whenever um, I talk to my guides or spirit about this, they always show me a ladder and they say, growth is not linear. Time is not a ladder. It's not going up all the time. Your growth is expansive. It grows from every which direction. So hermit time, we're in limbo. We got to think about things. So I'm going to um, go back to the nouveau deck, get some clarification on the hermit. Okay, we got some jumpers. I'm just going to go with it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. a lot of major arcana going on here. Not a lot, a lot, but you know, in this, these significant cards like Empress, Hierophant, Judgment, and now I just pulled Hermit and then the High Priestess. The High Priestess, although she isn't Scorpio energy per se, Scorpio is an extremely intuitive sign. In fact, you cannot lie to a Scorpio. They, those motherfuckers read you like a book. So don't bother. Um, so hermit, high priestess, and the two of cups. So there's a lot of cup energy here. Almost all cup energy. I only pulled the, the four of wands and the four of swords otherwise besides major arcana. So in this time of spiritual limbo, we're being asked to trust our intuition over everything else. No matter what anybody tells you, I don't know why doctors are coming to me, like doctors, teachers, your boss, um, anyone, no matter what anyone outside of yourself is, it's time to shut those voices out and tune into you, tune into your soul's intuition. You know yourself, you know the answers to you. So in sacred silence, in introspection, in limbo, in hermit mode, that's when our in intuition has the ability to grow but it's really when we need to start channeling and listening to it. Meditation needs to happen, guys. And I also pulled the two of cups, which is a beautiful divine union. All right, I'm getting so much divinity in this Scorpio reading. I'm loving it. I feel like this is, this is a culmination of a lot of stuff is going on here. And we got another jumper, five of cups. Okay, and I want to... I want to clarify. Um, so five of cups, though, is a little bit, it can be a somber card, but I'm going to clarify it because I feel like this is an anxiety coming up for us. I feel like maybe we lost something at some point and we're scared to lose it again. So let's clarify this five of cups. Oh, but another cup though, might I add. I'm gonna just give this a big shuffle. These cards are so energetically charged right now, it's crazy. Nine of coins two of um, wands. So I feel like we're scared that we're going to um, lose our vision of the end goal. So nine of cup, I'm um, sorry, nine of coins to me is like manifestation come true, particularly with like wealth. Um, 
money, fortune, good fortune. So, and then two of um, wands is like, you have the world at your hands. You have nothing but inspiration and a future goal. So I feel our future, our eye on the prize, our end goal is always to be um, financially stable, but generational wealth here. So we're scared to lose that. I think that's what the five of cups is telling us. Um, we need to keep that high vibration of um, trusting the universe and that not everything is going to be taken from us. Um, I used to have that fear that everything would be taken out from under me. Um, like the rub rug swept up from under you. I believe that's the saying. And it took me a long time to work through that. In fact, a friend of mine who's also an, she's an incredible intuitive. She was like, you have this thorn, rose thorn in your side. And when I identified it as that and I worked through it, she was like, I, I felt the rose thorn be pulled from your side. And now you're like a deflated balloon, but in a good way. <laughs> so I do actually want to get a little bit more clarification on why. I guess that we just, it's natural for anxieties to creep up on us. Kings, man. Knight of Wands and Ten of Coins. Okay, so again, I, I think this is telling us not to worry. Um, that the worst is behind us. Like we are, we worked hard to get where we are. You know, back in our first leg over here, we brought something to fruition that we really wanted to birth. And now I'm, you know, we need to not be scared that everything is going to get taken from us. Um, divine timing, our path, we were put here for a reason. And the 10 of coins kind of just is the, the knight of wands to me feels like he's bringing me good news. Like, don't worry about this. Don't worry. We got this. Um, and the 10 of coins is kind of just solidifying like the end goal here, the bigger picture that you are, I kind of with the 10 of cups over here, I, I kind of want to tell us all like, we're going to get our happily ever after. And this is the beginning to it. Okay. Um, alrighty. So the 10 of cups, getting our happily ever after whatever that might look like to any of us. Okay, page of wands. I jokingly call that my fuckboy card, but not so much in this deck because if this is your fuckboy, yeah, you need to reevaluate. But anyway, um, the chariot, the magician. Okay, so if our end goal is our happily ever after, um, what we have to really understand is with the chariot is it takes, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not just patience. Um, I know that that's the cancer card, but I always get such Taurus energy from it. Um, because Taurus knows that to like have stamina and like stay balanced and steady when you're working towards your goal. So it might be a long road. It might, it might've been a long road, but if you kept if you persevered through it, um, you're going to get that, that happily ever after that you want. And the magician is kind of telling me like you manifested all this and it's all within you. Don't start doubting yourself now. Cause I feel like that, that, um, page of wands is kind of like telling us don't doubt yourself. Now, this has been your vision all along. This has been your, your man desire. This has been your desire all along. Stay, stay strong. This is the beginning of the end. Wow. Um, well, I feel happy with that. <laughs> I do. I feel good about it. I really, really do. So I'm going to pull a card. Um, I'm going to pull a card to end this. And I think I'm going to use, I'm going to go back to the golden tarot deck and I'm going to use, yeah, I'm going to pull one card and then I'm, I'm really excited to show you the Oracle deck that I want to use because it's so rad. 
seven of coins. I just feel like we're, something is about to come to fruition that way I worked really hard on. Like really long and hard on. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. So I'm so excited about this. Oh my God, I can't wait to show you guys. So I'm a sucker for the winter months, like the Yule months. And I think that's just because I live in California now. Cause I, I always loved like the spirit of Christmas growing up, but it's fucking cold in New York. And right before I moved out here in 2010, we were coming off of two of like the most brutal winters ever. And I was literally like climbing out my front window to go catch a bus because the snow was so bad. <laughs> so I think I appreciate it here in California because when it cools down, it's not cold, but it's beautiful. It's, it's really nice. So um, I got this Oracle deck seasons of the witch perfect we are so in witchy season but this is the yule um version of it and i just think it's it's beautiful something about yule and the cold and the crisp and the snow um there's there's quite a beauty to it but if you live in a snowy place you know the only really beautiful the first day um this um this is by lorraine anderson and juliet diaz which i have their earthcraft oracle which i also adore um but she has two more of these she has a sawin one um which i was i want to get that too but there is a pre-order for her belting one um so very cool and the, i mean look at the deck is just so rich with yule energy so i'm gonna pull um a yule card here whoops and one jumps okay let's go with it right wreath there in the circle of life tends to breathe death. One is not without the other, eternally bound by the essence of spirit. Well, considering I've been talking about cycles this whole reading, let's see, number 43 here. The, oh God, I think I need glasses, but that's a whole other story. I even think I said that in my last reading. Okay, all righty. Keywords, eternity, growth, symbol of circle. Life is always ebbing and flowing in a cycle of good and bad. Circles are perfect representation of the wheel of life. So when wreaths enter your spread, it is a reminder that good fortune will return to you in time. If you're going through a rough patch, know that this period will not last forever. You are coming to a turning point in your life and more paths will be available to you soon. Until that time, remember what you you are what you attract. Keep a positive attitude and trusting in the universe will help draw even more favorable circumstances. If you're going through an unusually favorable time, remember to make the most of it as things will return to normal sooner rather sooner or later. Live in the moment and cherish any good luck you have because it may be over in a flash. Beautifully said of the cycles of life. Okay. So thank you all for joining me for this um, Scorpio Sun Goddess reading. Um, I will be um, facilitating my sophomore group of my movement, the Empress Ascension. My Empress girls are moving on to their masterminds where we're going deep into trauma, um, trauma bonds, mother wounds, family trauma, sexual trauma, body image trauma, starting in the new year. Um, and that's also when I will be facilitating the sophomore group of Empress Ascension. So um, look out for any information to um, get on the wait list for information on this. Um, you can go to my website to check out just more information in general. It's www.erintheurbanmermaid.com. And if you go to the top, I have a tab that says Empress Ascension. I would love for you to check out. Um, and you can also sign up there for the waiting list. So I just want to say thank you all for joining me and, um, take what you need from this and leave the rest. Much love.